so the richness of historical sites and uh, hist uh, archaeological uh, sites in Syria used to bring a huge quantity of uh, tourists and uh, experts uh, into the country. Uh, now the ongoing civil war in, uh, in Syria, 2011, uh, trig triggered a new war, uh, a new wave of uh, visitors into the country. So uh, jihadists and uh, radical people uh, came from uh, all the world to fight with or against uh, the regime. The arrival of these jihadists uh, was accompanied by huma humanitarian crisis, loss of human lives, and uh, systematic destruction of the cultural heritage. Uh, I would like to shed light on the situation of the cultural heritage in Syria from the beginning, from uh, the Ottoman uh, Empire. Middle East became a very attractive destination for uh, European researchers, uh, travelers, and uh, missionaries, especially during the two last uh, uh, centuries of the Ottoman Empire. Since that have been the, the cradle of the three monotheism religions, Judaism, uh, Christianity, and Islam. It's okay now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in uh, 19, uh, in 1891 was the inauguration of the Imperial Museum in uh, Istanbul, and many artifacts uh, have been exported or imported from all uh, the old uh, Ottoman Empire territory, and uh, during the French mandate, uh, <coughs> antiquities uh, belong to the, the authority of the General Directorate of Antiquities uh, in uh, Lebanon and uh, Syria since 1926. And then the French High Commissioner gave extra importance to the conservation and restoration of the historical monuments in uh, Syria. Uh, the archaeological labor become, became more organized and a variety of archaeological missions uh, were formed, such as in Palmyra or uh, Arslantash, uh, Ogarit, uh, Tel Mishrfe, and others. In general, some updates of the Ottoman legislation was developed and the heritage priorities uh, became visible in, uh, in cultural, academic, and aesthetic context. Uh, in uh, 1936, the National Museum of Damascus was uh, inaugurated, and after the independence of Syria in 1947, uh, the Prince Jafar al Husseini became the first Syrian director of the National Museum of uh, uh, Damascus after he was dispatched to Paris to learn the, uh, the French experience in uh, antiquities and museums. The cultural heritage before the Syrian cultural heritage before the civil war uh, were regulate, uh, was regulated in accordance with the international conventions, like for example, uh, Hague Convention 1944, uh, 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 and it was uh, ratified in Syria four years after, and uh, the Convention of uh, Prevention. Uh, illicit import, export, and transfer uh, cultural pro properties, uh, 1970. And it was uh, ratified in Syria in uh, 1975. And uh, since uh, 1963, the law of antiquities and uh, its uh, amendment, 1999, regulated uh, the heritage questions in, in the country. Despite the lack of resources, both in terms of uh, human and uh, economic terms, the situation of the Syrian cultural heritage after the establishment of uh, uh, the Syrian Antiquities Law uh, has been, uh, in my opinion, a very good e example. The official authority uh, responsible for protection and uh, promotion of the cultural heritage in Syria is the Director General of antiquities and the museums, which played uh, its role in an acceptable way uh, within the scope of, their, uh, of, of its possibilities and limitations. 
Uh, I would like to give some examples from uh, my personal experience in, in uh, Syria as a previous director of the National Museum of Raqqa and head of its department before. Uh, in Syria, we had between the city of Raqqa and the administra administrative borders here with uh, the, the neighboring province, Der Zor, we have just one uh, guard to, to the archaeological sites. While on uh, the northern part, on the Belich Valley, we had just two, besides some uh, guards uh, uh, appointed by, by the international missions. And uh, another uh, and this uh, uh, we can see that uh, the, the collaboration between the local population in, uh, in Syria and uh, the authorities uh, could save the, the cultural heritage during long time. And this could be ascribed also to the, int the internal antiquities law in the country. Uh, there's another point to support my, my argument, is the existence of regional uh, plan uh, planning commission uh, in each province, formed by the governor of the province and the major, as well as the directors of the uh, other administrative and uh, service department, uh, like for example agriculture or road constructions, uh, electricity and uh, other uh, sectors. So we had every month a uh, round table to discuss the organization chart for each uh, town of the of the province and uh, uh, always uh, we had this repre representation uh, and as antiquities law we have always the full power to change raise or uh, modify the organization chart uh, if it's falls or fall of the antiquities law and doesn't take into account the heritage uh, pr uh, properties. So let's uh, have now a quick view on, on uh, the Syrian antiquities law, 1963, with uh, all its amendments. Uh, I would like to mention some of these articles. Let's get started with uh, the article. Uh, 70, which uh, states the, di the Director General of Antiquities and Museums, head of the directorates, uh, museum curators, uh, are considered uh, members of judicial police. Uh, this means that uh, the Director General of Antiquities and Museums members have the full power to stop any illegal activity in the archaeological sites or in the protection area that uh, surround the archaeological sites. Uh, and uh, they must, and I will explain why I, I say they must uh, do this in the Article 63 in, in the same law, uh, they must start uh, judicial uh, persecution without waiting for the police, the national police, uh, and we used to write record of evidence, deliver it to the executive authority to enforce uh, antiquities law immediately. The next article is uh, the article uh, 56, which states smuggling or attempt to smuggle antiquities is punished by uh, 15 to 25 years imprisonment and a fine of half million to one million and it's considered uh, really hard uh, law in this case uh, the next one penalty of 10 to 15 years uh, and a fine of 100 to half million uh, to any person who steals movable or immovable antiquity carries out a, a legal excavation or uh, trade in antiquities. The next one is a penalty of 5 to 10 years and a fine of 25 to half million to uh, any person who damage, destroy or uh, distort the feature of movable or immovable antiquities. Make pieces, 
which distort historical facts or ascribes as archaeological nature of uh, to such pieces. And any person who sells such pieces claiming that they are antiquities is giving a penalty of uh, trading in antiquities. That uh, mentioned in the previous article, 10 to uh, 15 years uh, year, uh, imprisonment. Uh, and uh, the article 63 I have mentioned before, uh, which states a penalty equal to that of the perpetrator is given to anyone whose legal responsibility is to protect antiquities or control the crimes mentioned in this law. If they were aware or informed about such crimes and failed to take the appropriate measures in order to control them. This uh, article was uh, like a nightmare for, for uh, the DJM uh, members because we, we knew already if we, we don't take the, the appropriate uh, reaction, we will, we will have the same. <laughs> and I can suggest this, uh, this kind of, <laughs> of articles for, for the international law. Of course, there have been uh, some in infra uh, infractions of, of the mentioned law. But in general, preserving the cultural heritage was, uh, was broadly in line with the Syrian Antiquities Law recommendation. Uh, now I would like to uh, present quickly some uh, examples about the, the situation of the Syrian cultural heritage uh, after the civil war. Serious crimes have been committed to, to the cultural heritage in Syria. Uh, the first kind of them is the systematic, systematically destruction uh, of the heritage using uh, or uh, uh, using the, the religious uh, rhetoric, like for example, uh, the Islamic State, Daesh, uh, when they destroyed uh, a variety of uh, historical monuments, uh, the last of them is in, in Palmyra, and uh, they tried to justify this uh, by religion, but uh, the economic uh, interest was be behind all, all this. The second one, uh, the second one is the involvement in the of individuals in looting activity. Uh, this was uh, we can we can relate it to to the creation of uh, smuggling and looting activities or networks uh, created already in Lebanon during the civil war in uh, 1975 to 1990, and uh, the flourishment of such uh, networks during the or after the fall of Baghdad in uh, 2003. And the last uh, example is misusing the heritage for political ends. And I uh, will use the conspicuous example of the historical city of uh, Palmyra, how the Syrian regime misused the city for political ends. ends. Uh, it's relevant to mention that uh, the Islamic State, or Daesh, uh, announced its intention to occupy the city of Palmyra, which is located in, in the heart of the Syrian desert. But no action uh, was taken by uh, the, the Syrian regime. Also, uh, the, the troops of Daesh could have been an easy, uh, an easy target for the Syrian aircrafts during their approach towards uh, Palmyra, but thus that never happened. In my opinion, this uh, theatrical way of, of using or misusing the, the heritage uh, should be uh, persecuted. And uh, the loss of, of uh, a redeemable monument in, in, in uh, Palmyra uh, also, the loss of human lives, and uh, we lost also some of our uh, experts, like, for example, uh, Khadil Asad, 82 years old, former director of uh, Palmyra, should be persecuted by, by uh, the International Criminal Court, like uh, following the initiative of Ahmad Al-Faqil Mahdi after destruction of uh, Sufi shrines in Timbuktu in 2012. So the current situation 
is pretty complicated, and the collaboration between the, the national authorities of, uh, and, and individuals and the international community is strongly recommended. The international community uh, has been working on uh, the documentation and the assessment of the damage in, in all the country, and based on uh, a previous work I have realized, uh, on documentation of the three uh, northern provinces in uh, in Syria, during uh, uh, my work in uh, in Spain, in Santiago de Compostela, uh, and I could uh, realize documentation of 177 uh, sites in Raqqa, Deir Zor, and Hasake, which had suffered all kind of uh, destruction, looting, uh, uh, iconoclastic vandalism and and others so to uh, based on this this uh, documentation uh, looting activity followed uh, uh, a pattern it's possible to establish a pattern for for uh, uh, this uh, because the looters followed the roman and the byzantine sites uh, uh, looking for uh, the gold and the precious met metals in uh, in the region, and especially after obtaining the metal detectors and the heavy machines necessary to run their uh, own excavations. And as a conclusion, I would like to say that it's necessary to spread knowledge about the heritage at risk, raise awareness, and most importantly, of the conflict area. Uh, is one of the so strongest fa uh, strongest factors uh, to increase such crimes and we should pay more attention to the concept supply and demand i mean no dealers no smugglers thank you very much thank you, thank you very much and now let's see if we have any questions from the audience Please raise your hand and present yourself when you, before you ask your question. Uh, and I've also received information that we're, we're not allowed to turn off the lights. Lights should be on since uh, this symposium is being filmed. And then when you see the film afterwards, all of these slides will be very visible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any comment or question, addition? Yes, uh, my name is Maria Domei Lundborg and I'm uh, representing the Nordic Center of Heritage Learning and Creativity in uh, Östersund. I think this uh, uh, was very interesting, a very interesting speech. Uh, and I've also been thinking throughout uh, these sessions about exactly this question. Uh, what do we know about the buyers? I mean, the demand. Who are the buyers now? Do we know, know anything about them? Yeah. How, could we, uh, how could we get n more knowledge about who wants to buy these items today during those circumstances? Exactly. Uh, I think uh, different countries in, in Europe uh, are considered uh, as an attractive destination for, for uh, items coming out of the conflict area. Uh, I can um, name London, for example, and uh, recently uh, the Arabic Gulf countries started to uh, copy the, the European and uh, obtaining archaeological items, uh, Japan also, and the United States. Uh, and I have a question uh, that is uh, connected to this. Uh, do you think it's uh, private persons, private collectors, or who who are these persons? Who are they representing? 
Yeah, they are representing private uh, collectors and um, auctions, and but not not uh, not uh, static uh, state uh, uh, organization or uh, mm -hmm. authorities. Because I think all the European uh, states or countries uh, are fighting against this illegal uh, trafficking. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not easy to control mm -hmm. the individuals or... Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>